Hey, what's up everybody? I'm John and on today's video, we're gonna be working on the Dodge Dakota. I wanted to show you guys the rad. So if you guys remember, and you can probably tell from the fan that I have running here and maybe you can even hear it. Uh, we did this electric cooling fan setup quite a while ago, but we've been having a heat wave lately and we've been controlling it with one of these Hayden fan controllers. I'm not a huge fan of the look of it, honestly. It's a little bit janky looking, but it does work. Essentially what happens is it has this little temperature probe that goes into the rad. We eliminated the clutch fan from the front of the engine and it comes with a relay and whatnot and some wiring. Uh, I tried to make it as clean as possible, but I still would like to improve that aspect of it at some point. But today's topic is I've had this, I think it's a 16 inch fan, I believe. Maybe it's 14, but anyways, you can see it doesn't take up the whole surface of the rad doesn't have a shroud on it and a lot of people were wondering and questioning whether it would be able to keep up to the demands of cooling well it's been like 115 plus out here lately and when you're moving it's fine but uh, the other day it started to get a little bit warm and even if it didn't start to get a little bit warm uh, the fan is like constantly running like from the moment you pretty much start the thing well not start it but you know what I'm saying it's running non-stop it's not like it turns on and then kicks kicks things down and then turns off and the other thing I noticed too was I don't know if it's a combination of both but I did have to add a little bit of water uh, and I think it probably just burped the system. Really, this truck has been, ever since we've rebuilt it and we redid the cam and everything and of course had to you know, drain the coolant system, it's been pretty flawless. So I kind of just topped it up and I may not have fully burped the system, but I did have to add a little bit of water because it was down a tiny bit and this thing was dry. So the overflow was dry, so meaning it pulled out as much water out of that overflow as it possibly could and still couldn't top up the rad. So my system might have been a little bit low. So with those two things combined and considered, at the same time though, I do have this cooling fan. Um, essentially what this is, is from another vehicle. I honestly don't even know the model of the vehicle, but you can see it's got a shroud and everything included. So what I was going to do is I was going to hack this up a little bit and try to do it as clean as possible. Maybe hack's not the right word, but I want to cut it so that it fits perfectly within here because this is actually wider, like considerably lighter, wider. I'll give you the measurements, but I think a visual would probably do better. You can see it doesn't fit inside the rad surface. So we're tight over here. We're probably like two or three inches off from this side. So as you can see, there's a bunch of dead space on the actual shroud of this thing. So what I was going to do was measure it and just buzz it right here cut it and that should give us a shroud i may have to seal this portion up at some point but at least it'll give us a better sealing surface and it'll be pulling through the rad instead of you know this where i'm only effectively using part of the actual rad i'm not pulling through all these different areas just you know that circle in the middle of the rad is the only part it's pulling through so this one and this one has a huge fan this is way bigger than this little baby fan that's on here as you can see, the blades in there are just tiny. And at the same time, fan is bigger. It's gonna have a shroud on it and we'll try it. It's free if it doesn't work, but I imagine that's gonna work better than what we've got here. It should move more air. So uh, let me go ahead and we'll start trimming this up. What I'm gonna do is, like I said, I'm probably just gonna trim through here and then we'll get it mounted up. Uh, I'm probably gonna use a similar mounting, I guess, technique as before, where it's kind of just like things going through the rad and holding and pinching it in. So. Uh, we'll make brackets later, I guess, if it works good, but let's go ahead and try it. We'll see how she works. Okay, so I'll give you guys some measurements. The bottom, from the bottom of the core to the other side of the core is just about 22 inches. If I go hook it on the bottom of the rad and go to the end to the end, it's 23 and a quarter, but obviously you don't need, you know, the flat plate portion of it. So that's that. So let's say, yeah, about 22 and a half. Now about 22, honestly, is what the actual surface is. And as far as width, we've got just about 22 inside on our tanks. So inside the core, so there is 22. And then if I go over here, we've got about 20. Yeah, so it's pretty much 20 inches, top to bottom, but then width is too wide, so. We hook it from there. We go over here, it's 25. So technically I could stand this up if I wanted to. 
Um, obviously 25 is too tall, but I think I'm gonna keep the orientation the same and just trim it. I think that's kind of my better option. But realistically, I wanted to, I could just stand it in there. Um, either way, let's pop this thing off and uh, we'll try to decide what we're gonna do. I think I'm still gonna stick with trimming it, but let's get this off first. All right, so that fan's off and here you go side by side. So you can see this one is pretty small. I mean, this one moves a lot of air to be, but I guess they're similar size, honestly, but the motor on this one is like microscopic compared to the size of the motor on this one. Look at the center of that beast. So let's go ahead and we'll see how this fits. I mean, worst comes to worst, we can just put this back on, but let's go ahead and drop this in, see if standing it up without trimming it looks half decent, or whether we wanna go ahead and hack it. So let me set the camera down and we'll try it. Here we go, first test fit. So it comes really close to touching on that pulley right there. Let's see. So out of curiosity, I don't know if you're to touching. So what I'm gonna do is just maybe like an eighth of an inch smaller than 22. So 21 and 7 eighths is what I'm gonna cut that to. And I'll show you guys what I'm gonna use to cut it. Made my trip to Harbor Freight and picked up this bad boy. So if you guys haven't used one of these, these things work incredible. High speed metal saw, obviously we're using on plastic, but wait till you guys see how well these work. And then we got these little blades some coarse blades and it's gonna go through that thing like, like a hot knife through butter. All right, so I've got my air saw and I've got my line here for what I need to cut off. Let's cut it. Okay guys, so I'm actually extremely happy with the outcome. I wasn't really expecting it to be this decent, but look. So she tucks in there beautifully. Come across, it fits all nice, it even has this lovely little sticker. And check that out, that little area where there's a void in the fan support actually fits perfectly there. So everything actually fits really well. So the only thing is we'll have to seal that opening up just so it doesn't try to pull air through there. But other than that, this is gonna work pretty good, I think. So what I'm gonna do next is to secure it to the actual rad, I'm gonna use kind of that uh, same principle. So see those little indents there? I'm probably just gonna drill a little hole through that hole and I'm gonna use it to come out through the front in the same fashion that those kind of work. So I'll put just a zip tie through and then put the end of the zip tie on the other side, but probably use some of that if, I don't know. I'm gonna temporarily hang it and then see this kind of foam tape. I'll probably put that there so that it seals up that opening on the one side, but really it doesn't look too bad, honestly. So I'm gonna get this situated and then we'll try her out. So here's the roll of rubber foam that I have that I'm gonna use to seal up that one side that's gonna have that bit of a gap. Um, and then we'll go ahead and we'll hang this. So we're getting close, guys. We'll see how she looks and how she works. All right guys, so this is still just for testing purposes, but I did put the foam tape, I tripled up on it so that it makes up for that gap and even then some, so it's gonna squish down and compact here nicely around so that we get a nice tight seal on the rad. So uh, I also drilled a little hole here to allow to pass through the wires for that Hayden uh, switch, the thermal switch. So I'm gonna go ahead, pass those through. And like I mentioned before, this is kind of my little temporary way of mounting the fan without having to make brackets. Just take some flat zip ties, the head of them, I drilled holes enough so that they get stuck on the other side. And then I just pass them through and it doesn't really damage the actual rad since it's a flat zip tie, it kind of fits nicely through there. And then on the back side, I use the head of another zip tie and those plastic washers and it holds it on tight. So let's go ahead, throw this on and uh, see how she looks. All right, so I've got my little ties holding it through and even more than that, I can put this little plastic thing back on here to kind of 
help hold it as well. It's, I don't even know what the heck kind of car this is from, but if you'll notice, I don't have a hole there. So I'm gonna drill a tiny little hole and steal the screw from the other half that we chopped off right there. So I'll drill a little hole so that can catch and it can hold it up as well on the back of our rad. But this is gonna look almost like factory in here. And our foam is butted up nice against the rad. So we'll see how she works. All right, guys, so we got the new fan on. She's secure. We got our wiring. Like I said, I'll clean it up later. This is I'm still just testing and trying to figure this all out for you guys. And this fan is significantly larger. So one thing I don't know is the polarity on this, uh, whether it's going to be spinning, like pushing or pulling. So we'll go ahead, start it up, let it get up to temperature, and see what happens when that fan kicks on and how much she moves. gauge whatever we want to call that maybe like 150 160 ish it's supposed to be a 180 degree uh, switch that we have on here so we still got a little ways to go and then she should kick on in a minute we'll see if we're pushing or pulling okay guys she just kicked off i just turned the i left the ignition on but turned the engine off just so we could test it but that thing moves a ton of air we'll start the truck back up again But it cooled her down like crazy. I did have to flip the wires because it was pushing out the wrong way, so. We'll watch her come back on again. Okay, so the fan just kicked on and you can feel it moving a ton of air. And that clears, as you can see. It's keeping our temps. Nice and check. Hopefully you guys can see that. There, now you guys can probably really see it. So it's keeping the temps down. It's still all about 100 degrees out right now, so it's not like it's cold out, but I think this is the better way of doing things here. It's blowing a ton of heat out. And it's all nicely sealed, it's not pulling it out of any yeah, it actually dropped our temperatures quite a bit if you look. Look at how low it's pulled the temperature down actually once the fan kicked on. It's like way low. So this fan definitely works as good as we need. Only question is gonna be, can the wiring from this Hayden fan controller keep up with the size of that fan? You can feel these wires getting a little bit warm, so. I don't know if it's gonna, we're gonna have to upgrade our little fan controller, but I'll keep an eye on it as always for you guys. The fuse holder is getting pretty warm too. All right guys, so that's gonna wrap it up. Um, as far as my thoughts on this, I think the fan is working much better than the old one with that shroud and that thing moves a ton of air. I saw the temperatures just completely drop as soon as we kept that on. The new question is, is that Hayden fan controller gonna be enough to keep up with that fan? So. Uh, I'm gonna have to investigate that a little bit more. We might have to get a beefier fan controller, one that's got, you know, uh, beefier gauge wire and fuses and all that stuff because all the components along that wiring system from that Hayden fan controller seem to be getting a little bit warm. I know sitting here it's under constant use, but I still don't think we should be feeling some heat in those wires. So I'll look into it for you guys on what I'm gonna do and the solution and see if I can come up with a better solution. But I think overall, you guys let me know in the comments below what you think of this fan mod. It is a much bigger fan than that, but uh, we might have to beef up our wiring now. So that's why I kind of did just did the temporary sort of wiring. Unless I just redo what we have with thicker gauge, that might be the ticket, honestly, is to redo it, put some beefier fuse holders in here, and uh, keep the same setup because obviously it's working with the fan switch, uh, temperature switch and all that too. But let me know what you guys think in the comments below. What do you want to see next on this thing as far as cooling mods? But uh, always improving things, always learning, and always sharing. So if you like it, give it a thumbs up. 
hit that subscribe button and that bell so you're notified of all these videos and we'll see you on the next one